Welcome back. You're now watching the lifestyle segment on the weekend show brought to you by Holy Crunch Popcorn. Hello, Didian. How was your week? It was good. It was really good, actually. How was yours? My, I don't know. It was just work. <laughs> <laughs> what was the highlight of your week? Uh, work, actually. Yeah. Work. I noticed I was working Monday through yesterday, actually. Yeah. You mentioned something about a breast cancer awareness this month. Yeah. What was that about? It was a workshop, actually, to enlighten um, and do tests and, you know, just create awareness on how important it is to run tests every um, six months or so. Yeah, just so that you are aware of, you know, symptoms and whatever could cause it. Talking about sy symptoms and awareness, I spoke in the intro about how the cost of everything has literally gone up. Last month was Suicide Prevention Month, and so we had a conversation in mental health, which we will be continuing today. And the reason why this is important is that, unfortunately, in the last three months, I've seen two videos of people attempting to commit suicide, one trying to jump off a bridge, um, one was stopped, one was successful. Well, not successful, one actually did it, which is unfortunate, and I don't know how that ended. But also, I saw some horrid videos yesterday of a bank robbery which took place in Otopo in Benue State. Now, we are really going through a lot. With the cost of prices, the increased cost of living, when there's poverty, when there's hunger, besides this affecting us physically, it affects us mentally. And at this point, more than ever, it's important to talk about mental health and how all of this affects us. And then there's also the flip side to what you see on social media and everybody is living their best lives. You go on LinkedIn, everybody is a hero, has got oh, yeah. five scholarships, ten job offers. Lots of promotions. And you're wondering, God, <laughs> when, literally. And this could mess with your head and your mm -hmm. mental health because start asking yourself. Are you enough? Am exactly. I enough? enough? What has oppressed you the most on social media lately? Uh, it's actually LinkedIn, actually. <laughs> Yeah, lots of promotions, lots of good things, and then you're wondering, what am I doing wrong, actually, like you asked, so yeah. I watched some church service and he was saying, people only show you their highlight reel. Absolutely. They don't absolutely. show you the bloopers yeah. and the likes. And that's what we'll be talking about. We will be talking about mental health. And join us to have this conversation we have. We have Grace Adubo, who is a life coach. Good morning and uh, welcome to the show. So, um, Grace, Andy mentioned in his intro um, about, you know, people committing suicide and actually we've seen it on social media. It's quite unfortunate that here in Nigeria you get arrested if you're caught doing that. How does that, like, how does that affect one's mental health? Because someone doing that is already going through a mental health situation. So how does that, quote unquote, punishment, you know, affect individuals? Oh, okay. So that's even news to me. That's what oh, okay. happens. Really, okay. Thank you for having me. It's um, so good to be here. And to answer your question, this is news to me that okay. you get punished, you know, mm. when caught, when you're supposed to be taken, you know, to a place where they should start um, attending to you, taking care of you. So that's news to me. Yeah, so mental health generally is something that we really understand here in Nigeria and it's a problem and even knowing that one one gets punished for attempting suicide it's another problem on top of that so honestly it's an it's it's news to me and that's wrong mm. it's totally wrong um, it should be a case of it should be an emergency case health emergency where you know this person should be evaluated you know should be checked to know what the problem he's going through is and or how whoever um, is in such a situation so it shouldn't be a time to punish someone so it's it's a it's a problem it's wrong it's totally wrong in my humble opinion it's wrong you know Talking about uh, mental health and social media, we were just having that conversation of how you go on LinkedIn and everybody's celebrating one promotion, one new offer, one scholarship or the other. You go on social media and everyone is showing you the great stuff happening in their life. Um, and this could take a toll on other people. And yet we come out and tell people, oh, don't be impressed by this. Don't let people deceive you. But when you go back to your corner, you still ask yourself questions. Mm -hmm. As a life coach, how do people balance the fake life on social media and the internet 
with the realities of the fact that you walk up to there and you're breathing and you don't have health bills, maybe that's something to celebrate. How do they strike that balance? Thank you. I mean, I had this conversation some days ago and it's, it's very, very critical in the sense that it's a trigger. It's actually a trigger. You know, going on social media and then seeing people excelling and then you're asking yourself, what am I not doing right? So that alone is a trigger. So in the mental health space, we would usually say that, you know, self-awareness is key. Self-awareness is very important. And, you know, once you are self-aware, you understand what you want for yourself and you know where you're headed, then some of those things would not trigger you, rather they would encourage you to want to do more. But it shouldn't be a case of it now making you feel that, no, I'm not doing well, I'm, I'm probably, my mates are doing well and I'm not doing well. So it's something that people should sit down, ask themselves, what am I about? What do I want to become? Who am I? Who am I? What's my journey? We are unique in our ways. You know, knowing that, I mean, I don't want to go your way because I don't know where you're headed. I don't want to go your way because I don't know where you're headed. But it takes a lot of awareness, self-awareness to get to the point where those things don't trigger you. And it isn't easy. It's, it's not, I'm not going to sit down here and say that it is easy to see some of these things on social media and then you say, ah, no, I would focus on my own focus. The ideal thing is, first of all, know where you're going to and then from there, it's going to be a lot easier when you're on the journey of um, self-awareness and, you know, getting your goals and all of those things. So other people might not really bother you and that. It's really unfortunate that in this part of the world, uh, mental health issues isn't seen as a mainstream health emergency. So could you explain the importance of, you know, taking care of your mental health and your well-being in general? It's very, 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 I can just go on saying very important. And that's because, I mean, we can see what's going on in the society today, you know, Day in, day out, you hear people talking about kidnapping, you know, people, I mean, I, I lost a colleague recently, this one chance thing, you know, so it's just a case of the lack of mental wellness in the society. I dare say that Nigeria as a country is in a state of for lack of a better way to put it, we're not mentally okay as a country, you know, and you can see that from what's going on in the society today. Yes, the awareness is not there, but thank you, you know, for this show. You, we're putting it out there and we're hoping that people would, you know, get to learn and become very intentional when it comes to their mental health. So what I would say is individually, we should, you know, be very intentional because it has to start from you and then your environment, your immediate environment before we start to enjoy it in the society. So I would say that the awareness has to be there as a country. It should be very, it should be, like you said, it's not there in the forefront. You know, people don't talk about it. And I think it has to do with our culture. You know, we have this mental health. It's not something that in fact, because of the stigmatization, that's mental illness, because of, you know, people don't want to talk about it. See, mental health, no, no, we're not, we're Nigerians, we're Africans, we don't, we don't do that here and all of that. But thank God the narrative is changing and we're getting to the point where people now understand that our behavior, how we think, how we do things, um, has to do with our mental health. So we're getting there, we're not there yet. But I think the um, awareness, education, and shows like this can help us get to where we're heading towards, but we're very far from where we're going to. Allow me to rumble a little, and I'm asking this to both of you. Um, as a Christian, the Bible talks about the wisdom of the old and the strength of the youth. And besides social media, now society, especially Africa, 
and Nigeria, we have this obsession with relationships and marriage. Yeah. I saw on Twitter last week where 20 plus young people were attacking 35 and above people, calling them old, premenopausal, and attacking young ladies approaching 40 for not being married. You get married and they now attack you for not having a child. Mm. And this is not even the internet now, it's now people against people. Divorce rate is at an all time high because now people now go off and marry the wrong person just so that they'll say, I've been married. And even though this person was a mess, at least I've married, so you can't say I didn't get married. So people don't mind getting married, even if it's for two years, then they get a divorce and they move on, which now leads to having children in single parent households, which transfers the trauma. Mm -hmm. And so with the way society attacks, especially <coughs> women, for being unmarried or being childless, how much or what do we need to do to address that? We always call people Gen Z, you will call older people ancestors and all whatnot. And so seeing that conversation on Twitter last week where younger people, younger girls were attacking older girls for being unmarried and old and all whatnot, it didn't sit well with me. And so how do how should that be handled? And this is something that I would like to learn from both of you. It's quite unfortunate, you know, I saw that conversation and going through the thread on X, I... Oh, X, no longer Twitter, X. <laughs> yeah, I was um, amazed, firstly, then secondly, I wasn't really surprised. I was just amazed that, you know, they could see, use the words they were using, which I can't repeat here. But um, I was not surprised because it's something that's been ongoing and it actually started from the older generation. Yeah. When they were younger. <laughs> yes, because uh, the older generation got married quite early. My mom got married at 19. So they got married really early uh, compared to our generation now where people wait till maybe they're like in their 30s or even 40s to get married. Yeah. Uh, because we now want to achieve a lot before we do and that. Maybe we just know better. Uh, yeah, that also, you know, when you get older, you get wiser, <laughs> as they say. So um, it's quite unfortunate because these same people who were attacking the, the 30 plus, 40 plus women will definitely get there. At the end of the day, that was just my summary of everything. That let's just hope we're, we, you know, are alive to actually see our thirties, forties, fifties, and so on. So it was just quite unfortunate. It was unnecessary, yeah. to be honest. It was unnecessary. Grace, what do you think? Yeah, very unnecessary. And um, again, know thyself. Mm. You know, know thyself. I can't say that um, well enough. Know thyself, because if you don't know yourself, you just follow what people would always say mm -hmm. and you know this is one out of many I mean if you are unmarried get married get married then you follow the pressure you get married like you said and then you're married one year no kids how how come you're still you know so and then you get a girl, they say, when is the boy coming? Do you understand? And it would it's amaze you. You have two and they're, they're telling you, add one more now. You know, so that's why it is important to know yourself and know what you want, you know, with life and what you want for yourself. Because if you keep following, and I wrote it recently that I was just talking about um, um, Mubad, you know. He was the rave of the moment some weeks um, ago yeah. and he... I mean, we're not talking about him again. And that's just how this life is. And I tell people that if you don't know yourself, you follow the tide, you follow the wave, and then you're, you're caught up in a place where you're harming yourself, following people, random people that you don't even know what they're going through, where they are, you know? So I think on social media, and that's one thing that you'd be able to tell, that you know, because people are going through different things, they project. That's the word. They project. And that's why <laughs> you have to be very careful. You hear all, all sorts online. People projecting their insecurities, projecting what they're going through, what they're dealing with, and you are following them. If you don't know yourself, you're going to be hurting yourself at the end of the day. So what I'll say about this is Sometimes I don't even follow it because I don't, I, I, I don't want to stress my head because I'll be like, how can people be still talking about this mm. in this day and age? I mean, so if we're still there talking about it, this, this yeah. happened just recently. Yes, so yeah, it, yes. it's, it's unfortunate. But yeah, social media is neutral. 
you do with it, whatever you want to do with it, and then you get out of it what you want to get out of it. So for conversations like this, putting the awareness there, it is important so that people should be able to know that so this conversation going on is the norm. However, it's important that you know yourself and you know the journey you are on so that you don't allow what people, the crowd mentality, because that's what it is. People are going this way. When they're done with that, they'll go this way. And then at the end of the day, you see that you're not even on a path. You're going with what every other um, person is going with. So that's what I would say. My take is know thyself and know your journey. Okay, so Grace, before we go, you've been speaking a lot about awareness. Um, are there any resources or support networks available You know, for people who want to know more or reach out to you also yeah, concerning sure. their mental health? All right, so I, I work for um, a foundation called Friends to Lean On Global Foundation. And Friends to Lean On Global Foundation, what we do basically is create awareness, you know, and we educate people about mental and emotional wellness. You know, we go to places, talk to them, you know, what they need to know, the basics. So that's what the foundation is about. So Friends to Lean On Global Foundation is one channel and then we do trainings here and there we go to offices creating the awareness is making people know that there's a thing like that and you know taking steps to i mean taking care of their own mental health and then talking about it so it's tell one to tell the other that's what we're about so this is an opportunity uh, you're hearing this right now it's our duty it's not for a select few it's because I mean we're in the same society and if we say that it's not my business I mean we drive on the same um, road where people that are going through issues are also driving and then the person will just come and do you understand what I mean and then we have people in schools in our work um, environments that are going through things so if we are not advocates so this is me saying that we should be advocates individual advocates so that people can hear. But Friends to Lean On Global Foundation is one place to be. Um, our website, should I? Yeah. Yes, please. So our website is www.friends2, the number, to lean on com. So there you'd find how to reach us. And then we have professionals. We have um, some therapists there that also offer free services to people that are going through a mental health issue or the other. So that's our own quota. That's what we do for our community. Thank okay. you so much, Grace, for your contribution. And to our viewers out there, in the words of the great philosopher in the area, she's actually a musician, she says to thy own self, be true. <laughs> Self-awareness plays a major role. Know yourself and understand that everybody, I, I say this in pigeon, that everybody get everything they worry about. Everybody has what they're dealing with. And so there's no point looking at the next person and thinking they've got it better than you. They may have it better financially, but you have it better health-wise. They may have it um, better in another way, and your mental health may be okay. But there would always be seasons. There would always be good times. There would always be bad times. And it's how you deal with it. Just appreciate it every day as it is. Suicide is not an option. Feel free to find someone, a safe space that you can talk to. I mean, they say your best friend has the best friend, so people take it out. Exactly. But if you can afford a therapist, find friends to lean on. I hope your therapists are quite cheap because I know uh, mental <laughs> health and therapy that is free. quite expensive. Yeah. Oh, free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. And so get help if you need. Look for someone to talk to. Religious leaders and institutions, you have a role to play. And for the young, the young will get old, the young child grow. <laughs> Always remember that. And so this world goes round in cycles. Any final comment from you, Didi? No, you said it all. You said it all. Right, we'll take a quick break and when we return, more on the weekend show. Don't go away.